Rosa. Hi, Steve Kaufman, and we're going to have a very, very good experience here today. We're going to do this in a formal way, but we're going to do it informally formal. In other words, we're going to focus primarily on getting something accomplished and learning a lot. Right, Sayabiki is one of the most important aspects of using the sword. If you don't know how to pull, you don't know how to cut. It doesn't matter, well, gee, I'll practice my, uh, you know, sheathing or unsheathing later. I want to get my techniques down. Getting techniques down has nothing to do with being able to use a sword properly. Do you understand why? If you can pull your sword correctly, that means you have the proper mentality, and you also have the proper attitude towards going in, and what is the main purpose of pulling your sword in the first place? Taking the enemy out, okay? It's not like, hey, don't mess with me, I'm faster than you. You pull for one reason, and one reason alone, and that is to destroy the target. Now notice I said destroy the target. And they say destroy the attacker or the enemy. Okay, and there's good reasoning behind that. You see somebody coming out and he's going <laughs> doing a uh, machete dance or something like that, your first thought is gonna be like, oh my God, I'm gonna, you know, I gotta have a, I'm gonna have a problem over here. On the other hand, if he's just looking at it as an attack, you're already on an objective plane and you're looking at it, what do you have to do to stop that? Which is completely different, okay? You don't do that in the proper form. You're not gonna be able to follow through with the cut, and you're not going to be able to follow through with the finality of the attack. And the attack meaning you. Now, if someone comes at you and they're attacking, you're not going to counterattack. Counterattacking suggests reacting to a situation. Reacting to a situation, this is what Musashi would say this, means that you're unsure of yourself. So you're not going to react. You're going to act. It's a completely different thing. React is two moves. Act is one move. Same thing applies when you're doing the kata. When you're doing kata, you're making the kata as one move. You're not doing it as like a whole series of first I pull, then I cut, then I step, then I ski, and then I do my chaburi. It's one move, it's one action. And the way you start this is by the basic idea of sayabiki. Okay, sayabiki is the pulling of the sword in the first move towards disposing of an enemy. Okay, now I'm gonna do it slowly. And I want you to watch what I do. Sayabiki is grabbing the sword and pushing at the same time. It's not this and this and this. You never pull the sword out of the saya. Why don't you pull the sword out of the saya? Anyone? You'll cut the saya, you're playing with a four foot razor blade. Okay, so what you wanna do is make the target understand that you're coming at it. And if I'm gonna be going to the face, I'm gonna essentially go like this. Okay, notice the geometry. This comes all the way here, and the reason that comes all the way there is to let me open myself wide up. This gives me from here at least another six inches. This extra six inches, and we're gonna explain this and go over all of this. This extra six inches is going to enable you to keep moving forward and cutting. Not chopping or slashing, but cutting and getting control of the blade. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is sayabiki. Now, if you have your boken or your sword in your belt, make sure that it's in the proper position. The first move you're gonna do, first move you're gonna do, is reach for the weapon. Reaching for the weapon is not just grabbing your sword, pulling it, and cutting. Reaching for the weapon is an attitude. At this point, you've already determined that it's necessary to make this move. So you can't be saying, well, hmm, if I do this, he'll back off. No, it's simply one motion, like so. Okay, now if you don't have a sword and you have a boken, you're not gonna be able to do sayabiki this way. 
you'll be able to do it this way. Just from here, from in your belt, just take your hand and go like that. And put your hand behind you, okay? So let's try it. Let's try the basic Sayabiki. Now, I'm not going to be standing here and pontificating. We've got a six-hour workshop here. I'm going to be in around you, yelling, screaming. Well, not yelling and screaming. Depends, you know, when I get to know you, then I yell and scream. Right? <laughs> okay. But I'm going to make sure that whatever I show you today, when you leave, you're going to know it. It's not going to, what did he say? No. You're going to know it. And the reason you're going to know it is because it's your responsibility to get everything out of me that you can, as well as it's my responsibility to give you everything I possibly can give you. So you've got to accept. You don't have to necessarily agree, but you have to be aware and you have to accept that what I'm showing you, based on my experience, not necessarily what you think is right or wrong, that there's got to be some grounding and good reasoning behind this. So now that we're in agreement with that, notice I didn't ask you for an agreement. I said now that we are in agreement. That, and what that indicates is that you, as a practitioner, have to be totally sure in your head that you know what you're doing and why you're doing it. Or else it's never going to work. Okay, so let's start with a basic Sayabiki. Okay. First thing you're going to do is just step forward like this. Okay. Do you know why the hand is like this? Anybody? Don't be shy. Come on. Come on. This is not like duh. Okay. Why is the hand like this? Loud enough for everybody to hear. Wrong. Why is the hand like this? Close. The, all right. The reason the hand is like this is because they wore how many swords? They wore two swords. So if they were to go like this and the short sword is always in front, see it's a little thing, okay? Then how are they going to grab it? So you come up and as you're coming up, watch the thumb. This is to say, well, that's a little chicken shit. Man. What, what, what is so important about these tiny little things? These tiny little things to the true Buddha and the samurai meant life or death. Because when they pulled, they meant it. Okay? It wasn't a novelty. All right? It wasn't, unfortunately, what has become a hobby. All right? Kind of thing. Hey, I practice samurai sword far out. Okay? Why? The whole idea here is to develop focus. And the focus you're developing is not just for the sword. The focus you're developing is for your overall life. Hey, if I can do this and I can focus on this, and we're not talking about karate, kick, punch, bang, okay? We're talking about, well, except in the pure sense of it, which has nothing to do with the nonsense that you see in most of the dojos, okay? All right. And do you know why karate was originally done? Karate was originally done against this. Okay, even though it was a self-defense mode for many, many years. Okay, let's go back to the poll. I'm going to hold back from the Japanese words except where I have to use them. When I come in here, and I'll do it both ways, my whole body is moving. I'm not moving my hand. I'm not moving this to pull this, okay? I'm just moving. Now, as I do this, my saya comes out a little bit. Why does my saya come out a little bit? Come on, what's your name? Matt. Matt? Hi, Matt. You're getting ready to pull it and bring the Okay, but what is another good reason that I'm doing that? Come here. Come here. What's your name? Sam. Sam, okay, hey. Okay, watch slowly, okay. Don't necessarily move, okay? If I just go this way, he can move that way, okay? But if I go this way, there's not much he's going to do except that. Would that. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So, all right? So all these little things. And this is, we're just into this for five minutes. Can you imagine where you're going to be in six hours? <laughs> I'm probably out of my mind as well. But that's okay. We're all in the same boat. Anybody who this is an aesthetic art like this has got to have a different way of thinking than most people, which is why it's almost impossible to explain to people what you're doing and why you're doing it. And it's got nothing to do with age or gender. 
or anything else. So as you're coming out, very simply, Saya Bicky, I'm looking through, through the target, and I'm just going to go one move. Okay, notice the angle. It's not here, it's not here, it's not here. It's perfectly, what's the word? Tangent? Level. Oh, okay, that works too. Parallel to where I'm cutting. When I practice, okay, and I'm going to be coming around. When I practice, I use my own body as reference. And why do I use my own body as reference? Is because I don't have to, well, how big is the guy? We're going here, so it's like, like this. The point is absolutely focused into the throat in this particular instance. Why? If I go here, charge in if I missed. If I go here and I missed, he'll eat the sword. Very simple. Okay, let's do some sayabiki. Remember, keep the point of the sword, okay, directly into the, is that okay? Okay, directly into the throat area and keep your back straight. If you lean in, you're off balance. If you're off balance, you can't make the continuation to go into the next position. That's it, okay? Lower your own throat, your own throat, okay? All right, put them down, and we're gonna do it again. Using the bokken, make sure that when you pull, it's the same thing. And the other hand goes behind. And the reason I want the other hand behind is because it's gonna make the body go this way. If it makes the body go this way, it's going to give you that extra stretch. And you want the extra stretch. Do you understand why you want the extra stretch? Yes, it's easy to cut closer than it is to cut far away. Simple, okay? Everything in the Ido, see the angle you have there? That angle gives you the spring you need to like pull out. Here, you can't, well you can, but you have to work. You don't want to do anything extraneous that doesn't have to be done. If you start to do something extra, it's because you didn't complete the first move. Simple enough. If you turn your body all the way, it'll come right out of the belt. If you don't turn your body, or you try to pull it before you turn your body, it's going to get stuck. Okay? Try it by pulling, by turning your body. Just you. Put the sword up. Okay. Face forward. Okay, now step in, and as you step in, turn your body. We'll exaggerate. Hey, it worked? Good. So now you know that in order to make a proper pull, you have to extend your body. Okay, up. All right, one of the most important aspects of any martial arts move, any move, anything you're doing at all, is to exhale properly. Exhaling properly means that when you breathe, it's not like <sighs> or <clears throat> no, it's not smooth. You want to go. <sighs> That's it. It's that simple. It's that simple. That's why when you see in like any of the karate fights or any of these other fights, they're grunting and moaning and screaming and carrying on. They're not executed. Okay, they're forcing intention. That's willpower. Willpower will deplete your energy in two seconds. If you let the technique or you let the weapon or you let the fist do its job and you just breathe and execute out, you'll have it. Okay? So, now we're going to do this. It sounds awkward at this point, but that's okay too. And where did I stop the breath? On contact. Okay, if I go, <clears throat> I have this. But if I'm just coming in straight, it's right there. It's the breath that controls the action, not you that controls the breath. If you're controlling the breath, you're also trying to control the move. If you're trying to control the move, it's your ego taking over. And if it's your ego taking over, you can get your ass killed. Simple as that. Okay, if you let the technique you let the weapon do the work, and you enjoy the extension of the weapon, okay? You enjoy the motion. It comes out with less stress or strain, okay? Don't reach 
for the tzuka. Meet the tzuka. A little tricky. What do you mean, don't reach for it? I have to move my hand. No, you have to extend your being into the move. And this is what Musashi says. If you're going to execute a move, get out of your way. Because if you don't, it's going to be, I'm faster, I'm stronger, I'm this, I'm that. That's just going to get you in trouble. So all you want, and don't worry about how fancy you look. Okay? Because there are different ways to like uh, finish moves as well. Some people finish a move like this. Some people finish a move like this. And some people finish a move like this. Right? And you will decide which is your own personality. Because I don't want you to emulate me. I don't want you to emulate anyone else. The only way you're going to become proficient in anything, anything, is by you telling it what to do and not letting it tell you what to do. Okay, we'll get more into that. Notice what happens to my body. What's my body doing? It wants to go forward. Okay, so therefore, what we're going to get to is from here to that. And here, when we bring it down and lock it, the body stops. Because that's the end of the move. Boom. <sighs> And let yourself move forward. It's just feel that thing when you're coming out properly, it's pulling you in. If it does not pull you in, then you are performing a move. And if you perform a move, you're not permitting your soul to go through your whole being. And that's one of the reasons that the sword is considered the soul of the samurai, because there's no separation between the two. Okay? Here we go. All you're going to do is just go, boom, and just lose your balance. Hey! Okay. okay you, felt, you felt the pull? Okay. Are you, if you're not feeling the pull, let me know so I can watch and see what I got to correct for you. Okay. Here's one thing I want you to focus on. If you're my target, or if you're my target, where are my feet? Pointed. Right. What happens if I point my feet this way? Well, for whatever reason, I'm going that way. This way, I'm going straight in. Okay? And the whole idea here is to constantly go forward. If you don't constantly go forward, you're not going into retrograde here. Okay? In a situation like this, you have to continue to go forward so the intention of your attack is to complete itself against the target. That's to destroy the target. Okay? The feet... They've got to be pointed at the target so you have control of your balance. Which is not to say that in advanced situations, uh, you're not going to go like that, or certain, certain moves like that. It's, it's got to be like that. Okay, and when you're pulling it out, don't lean in. Okay, so it'll be, fight me. Step, okay. What would be something like this? No. What's his natural? What's his natural reaction? Get the hell out of there, man! You know, unless he's, you know, okay. But if I do it this way, okay, this is more of an intent, and this is what you want to focus on. Okay? Thank you. Okay, here we go. You're not dig me. You're die. Okay. Big difference in attitude. I want you to go on this young man with the intention of doing it. Not with the intention of showing him how bad you look. We're going to take what we did and we're going to start to apply it to a somewhat practical situation. The proper way to do me in the standing position Is that cut? 
At this point, because I've made the cut, I pretty much know as to whether or not the target is taken. The target being taken, my eyes start to follow it down to the ground. Watch the, watch the uh, sake, the sword, the tip of the blade. Like so, huh? From here, I put my hand on my sire, and because I don't know if there's anybody behind me or not, boom, give him a little poke. If there's somebody there, they caught it. Not here, not here, not here. Here, and then up, and down, and take the blood out. What I do now, is I don't put the sword here. Where's the target? Where's the body? Body's here. I'm here in front of my right foot. At this point, I'm looking down. I step up. I step back. I don't move the sword. Reach for the sire. Sheath and come up. And again, this time I move my finger and I step back and it's over. And we're going to pull. Right here, just hold it here. We're gonna do it slow, we're gonna do it static. From here, I'm gonna bring my left foot up and I pull the sire in front of me. The reason I pull the sire in front of me is so I can grab it if I have to when I need it. Simple as that. Grab my sword, grab the tsuka, start to move in, keeping the kisaki in the face of the target. Over, not this this and just come in and cut. Cutting from here, put my hand on my sire, come back, little poke over my head, down, step in while looking down at my uh, target, switch my feet, don't move the sword, grab the mouth of the sire, Bring my feet up, make sure he's dead, and if he's not dead, you know, you can always go boom, boom, whatever you have to do. So you're not restricted, you're not limiting yourself to a particular formula. You take him and step back, boom. Okay, let's try it. Hey! Boom. No, don't step yet. Boom. Okay. Mm -hmm. Step in. Bring your feet up even. Okay, step back. With the, that's it. Now, pull it here. And sheath. Okay. I want you to think of this in terms of making an attack. You're not just doing a kiaido kata. You're making an attack. What's your name? Ben, sir. Ben, okay. Just do the first. Just do the... Pull. Hey. Okay. The second move is. Go ahead. Boom. Third move is. Fourth move. Fifth move. Sixth move. You got it. Sir. Okay. You just did the kata, correct? Yes, sir. Now attack. Step back. As a matter of fact, stand here and do it. And you're going straight. Make the attack. Hey! Close enough. No cigars, but close enough. Go ahead. And I'm going to tell you why. No, you're going to tell me why. What did you do wrong? I stopped during the attack. Sir. Why? Okay, now that you know you stopped during the attack because you were unsure, you've just corrected that problem? I believe so, sir. Execute. Hey! That works for me. Okay? What's up? Thank you. Okay. Tsukate is 
a situation where you're dealing with two people. Two people. What you're going to do is from here, you're not going to pull. You're going to do this very simply. You're just going to go here, bang, in the chest, okay, solar plexus. From here, everybody see that? You're going to take the sire off and turn that way and keep the sword on your chest. Got that? You're going to shift and stick them. You're going to pull, a, not going to pull the sword out, you're going to slide the sword out here, cut. From here, you're going to do a short chiburi. Now you took two people, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Boom. Boom. Huh? And then up. All right, here's how this is done. And this is why this is very important. This goes into the solar plexus. That will stop the person. That means if someone is this close to you, you can't really pull. So you're just going to go like, boom. That'll stop him because you got two people in front of you and you want to hit him that way so he'll move. You then pull the sword out, pull the sire off actually, and stick the guy that was behind you. Come back here, cut, clean it. Look both ways. He's finished, and come back up. Who's Stand here and do it. And you're going straight. Make the attack. Hey! Close enough. No cigars, but close enough. Go ahead. And I'm going to tell you why. No, you're going to tell me why. What did you do wrong? I stopped during the attack. Though. Why? Because I was unsure. Okay. Now that you know you stopped during the attack because you were unsure, you've just corrected that problem? I believe so, sir. Execute. Hey! That works for me. Okay? What's up? Thank you. Okay.